Thank you very much, Mr. Beard. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, Dr. Goodwin, uh, I know, and you mentioned it, that uh, the importance of the land to farmers. And, you know, uh, the scientists at the Colleges of Agriculture and Agriculture Extension programs are uh, constantly developing innovations and looking for better ways to produce more food on less land and water. So the, the, one of the things that I see is the new technology and the equipment that we have today we're able to, to more specifically place uh, some of the things that are important to growing a crop. And, uh, and the universities and the agribusiness as well as the extension program are constantly looking for ways to improve on that. So I guess I, my question is, that would um, you care to comment on how important that aspect of this research and, and protecting biodiversity? You know, I, I think there's always room for, for technology. Um, we can, you know, any time that, that uh, any of us say that uh, we don't have room for improvement, um, it's, it's a foolish statement. And so, and so certainly uh, we always look for techno technological solutions if there are. Um, I think in this case that, that there's certainly room for, for, for technological solutions like new sensor technologies to help us understand uh, the ecological dynamics that we, that we can't see. Um, I also think that uh, we need to step back at times and say technology is not always the solution, that we, we need to work with Mother Nature and help understand that, that we can apply these ecologically beneficial practices and still feed the planet. So thank you. Uh, Dr. Brownman, uh, you discussed the importance of biodiversity in agriculture. Uh, are there any other crops uh, besides soybeans, for example, uh, like the work that's being done at Purdue on internationally renowned for the work in genetic structures of crop plants like soybeans? So are there any other crops besides soybeans that are lacking in biodiversity and in the need of innovative research? Uh, I can't speak to the specific crops where there's great potential, but what I do know is that there are many crops where this kind of development could be incredibly beneficial. Um, soybeans had a huge development um, in the mid-century of last century to get them to the productivity point that they're at today, and they're continuing to do that work. We know that with almost all of the crops we grow, any time we can do innovation, and that ranges from um, reducing drought sensitivity to better utilizing nutrients um, to simply being better uh, cited in the places where we're growing them, that we are able to grow food more efficiently with less inputs, and that's always a benefit. Thank you. Uh, back to you, Dr. Goodwin, or Mr. Goodwin. Uh, uh, you noted that the Nobel Research Institute conducts independent agricultural research, uh, similar to our land-grant universities. So how does the NRI disseminate its research to the broader agricultural industry? We provide consultation services directly to farmers and ranchers in the Southern Great Plains. So we work directly uh, with those producers in an interdisciplinary approach to provide conservation uh, recommendations uh, based on their goals and objectives. And we also have an extensive educational program. We have thousands of people a year come to the, come to the Institute um, to learn uh, by seeing what exactly we're doing and how we implement those practices on the 15,000 acres that we own and operate as an institute. Um, we also certainly publish uh, in popular and scientific journals. Thank you. One last quick question. Uh, do you feel this works well for small farmers as well as large agribusiness and so on? I think there's a, a, a regenerative solution for all size operations. I don't think uh, size has a limiting, uh, is a limiting factor. The limiting factor is, do we think we can do it? And the answer is yes.